meet again. Hello everybody and welcome to an episode of Triassic Theories with our special guest, of course, who will always be with us. Well, mainly you. You're only here because it's Camp Cretaceous. I know. That's sorry. So in today's video, we are going to be discussing something that hasn't really been talked about in the Jurassic Park. Is it about Camp Cretaceous? And it is a scene from the end of episode 4. So if you haven't gone to see that episode, or any of the series at all, what are you doing? You gotta go and see it, because there's spoilers. But the scene that we are going to be talking about is at the very end, where Indominus Rex meets Toro in the Carnotaurus. Now you may be thinking, okay, what's significant about that? Well, I have a theory, which we're going to be discussing, because this is Triassic Theories, what if Carnotaurus, or Toro, communicated with the Indominus Rex, or the other way around, you know, whoever started it? Because here's the thing, you may be thinking, how oh, is this even possible? Well, there are three things that kind of confirm it. Two, well, two more than one, because one is very soon. The first and most obvious thing is if you know your Indominus Rex biology, you know that one of the um, strands of DNA for Indominus Rex, specifically the horns of the, above the eye orbits, and I'm getting real deep, is the Carnotaurus himself, which means that Indominus Rex has Carnotaurus DNA, which means that it has the ability to communicate this with this one. Maybe, maybe thinking, but oh, we've only seen it done with the Velociraptor. How can it be done with Carnotaurus? Well, that's not entirely true. You see, there's also another theory that has been going on for years about how the Indominus Rex tried to communicate with the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Rexy, and the only reason why it didn't work this time was because Rexy was too busy dealing with the fact that she, well, um, she was busy thinking, um, you're a threat to my rule of this island, I want to kill you. Which, to be fair, Rexy wants her space and Indominus is invading it. That's perfectly fine. So that's why it doesn't work with Rexy as well as the raptors, because the raptors, they, their space isn't being threatened. Rexy's was. She's ruled this island for years, and now something that's as big, if not bigger, which it was bigger, is threatening her rule. She's going to deal with that. But Toro, specifically, has no reason to. And even if he did, he wouldn't want to because he was a juvenile. Similar to the um, Carnotaurus that we see Rexy kill in Fallen Kingdom. Although that one was a little bit bigger, which was be another theory we're going to discuss, so stay tuned for that in another Triassic Theories. But anyway, Toro could possibly have communicated because another thing that's important to discuss is the next time we see Toro after this interaction. Besides the scar that he got from Kenji and Darius in episode 2, he shows no injuries whatsoever. Which means that Indominus Rex either scared it off or something, which I highly doubt. I don't think Indominus would let anything escape. Um, it, especially if it's something that it wants to fight. So, you can theorize that way that they communicate and Indominus Rex frees them. Which is perfectly fine. Not many people are going to agree with that one, but here's another thing. If you turn up the volume of the ending, you can actually hear Indominus Rex doing its classic chitter, and I'll probably play a sound. <laughs> and immediately after, Toro, um, roars or calls back. The Indominus Rex lifts itself up, and from what we can tell from the next episode, rips the Rex. But, judging from the way that Toro roars at it, it's not a threatening roar like um, the way it does in the way Carnotaurus does in Fallen Kingdom the first time I saw it. This one's 
a racing theater. But, but, um, also my theory. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm sorry. But I'll give you 50% of the credit because I know so We split the channel even. Sorry, Tori. You're our special guest. But, the reason why we can theorize this is possible is because of all the DNAs that we've seen, all the DNA that we know that is in the endowment stretch, specifically the ones that like we discuss more and more in the film itself, such as raptor DNA, um, the T-Rex DNA, the frog, tree frog DNA, and the cuttlefish, all four are mainly discussed in Jurassic World, and all four show side effects. The T-Rex, the main side effect is it it's bigger than they expected. The raptor DNA, it causes it to become way, 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 way smarter than the rat, regular raptor. And then you have the tree frog and cuttlefish DNA, both result in um, side effects as well. Cuttlefish DNA giving it the ability to camouflage, which, speaking of Toro as well, I want to see that in the second season. If we can see that with Toro, that would be so amazing. Then we could like theorize that it's going to happen in, in Dominion, but then that's just my hope. And also with the tree frog DNA, it's also able to hide its thermal signature. And also snake DNA that it has, it's able to sense thermal regulation, which is why it heads towards Main Street in the main park after it breaks up, because it can sense all those yummy, yummy, delicious people such delicious sweets. With that out of the way, the conclusion is that Toro and the Indominus Rex communicate. Because otherwise, why would Toro um, be able to be on Main Street with no wounds whatsoever from the Indominus Rex? Because another people, something some people may think is that maybe it, the cage that Toro was in was just in Indominus' way. Yeah, well, why would Indominus Rex even consider stopping? Because immediately when it gets there, it looks at Toro with curiosity, and so does Toro. Because he does, Toro doesn't look scared or threatened, he just looks curious, and so does the Indominus Rex. So it makes sense for them to communicate, and possibly Indominus Rex uses Toro to possibly do more damage, which is what it did with the raptors. Because what, once it had the raptors on its side, there was a lot more deaths on the um, table, and InGen's insurance policies were probably even more, uh, let's just say, they were completely fudged. And again, that's just me. What do you all think about this? Do you think this is a possibility for Indominus Rex's little ability to communicate? Or are you just one of the people who will assume that Indominus Rex just wanted to get to the park and, and um, the, well, the gate was in the way? Leave it in the comments below whether you agree or disagree. And if you agree, why do you, do you agree? Is it because you think that my logic behind it makes sense? Or is there another reason why you think that is possible? And if you disagree, why is it? And what do you think what happens with um, Toro and um, the Indominus? If, but with that all out of the way, that about wraps up this theory. If you've enjoyed it and feel like I've earned it, leave a like. And if you want to join the hunt, if you haven't already, smash the subscribe button. And until next time, be safe, and we, we will see you later. Bye-bye. And I have to redo that. I ball, balls it. My cane, it's ruined! <coughs> and I'm dying. Ah, uh, channel's over, guys. I'm gonna die. No, I'm not actually. Don't. I'm gonna have so many people just go, Oh my god, he's dying. No, no, no. False alarm, false alarm. Just a practical joke that's not really funny. Good grief, Austin. What is wrong with you? Uh, I'll be right back. Oh, oh no, stop drinking. Woo! <laughs>
<laughs> we got a video to make you and me. Let's try this for a third time. That was too much for sleep. And it broke again! Fucking <laughs> turtle.